So testing a Ural or Dnieper ignition coil. Um, this is a brand new coil from stock. Uh, I'm just going to do a simple static bench test with a no meter. Um, needs to be on the to test. We'll start by testing the primary winding, which is across here. Uh, it needs to be on the lowest setting, which in this case is 200 ohms. Yeah. One side to there, one side to there, and we've got a reading of about around about four ohms, which is what you'd expect. Uh, a six volt coil would be a bit lower, maybe three ohms, something like that, two and a half, three. Uh, but the main thing is it's not gone open circuit and it's not short circuit. If it's short circuit, it would be virtually nothing like that. Uh, then you can test the secondary winding across there. You need a much higher setting. Put that on 20k, that's 20,000 ohms. Under there. Make sure it's not touching that uh, spark cap there. Across there. And we've got 6.51, so that's 6,500 ohms. Uh, again, main thing is you've got a reading. It's not a short circuit. It's not open circuit. That's quite low, but it's not a particularly high performance coil. So there's not a lot of windings on there. So that's uh, that's probably what you'd, what you'd expect. Um, so that suggests that's a good coil. Uh, it could still be faulty because uh, it may break down when it's actually on an engine and gets hot and under load. It may it may short out inside or, or whatever. So I've devised another test. Uh, I'll call it a live bench test where I've rigged up a, another spare coil I've got. This is an old one that came with my own bike. Uh, somebody had taken this off and fitted a, a coil under the tank because uh, it wasn't running very well and they probably read somewhere that Russian coils aren't very good or you know, people read this stuff and they just tend to believe it without actually knowing. Uh, that people say Russian bearings aren't very good. Well, I know they are. I suspect it's the same with coils. Um, so I've rigged it up to an old car distributor, um, which is good because it's got a condenser, which means you've got a nice clean brake and you'll get a good spark if it's working. Um, it's a 12 volt coil, so I've got it on a 12 volt battery, uh, feed into the primary there. Primary uh, makes its connection through the points there. So, hopefully you can see that sparking away. And if I give it some speed, like there we are, plenty of ozone. Uh, while we've got the meter out, good idea to check your, if you've got resistor caps, check those as well because an engine can, st these can go open circuit and yet the engine will still run so just because an engine's running doesn't mean these are good again the same setting 20k these, are f these particular ones are 5k resistance so just put that across there something like that and you've got that's round about what it reads so that's good um, Again, if these goes over the open circuit, the engine usually will still run because the spark will jump inside. But the thing is, it pushes the voltage right up, which makes uh, makes it very hard work for the coil. Equally, don't be tempted to use any little devices like this that you see at auto jumbles that give you a, that boost the spark. They do boost the spark, but only by pushing the voltage right up, which is bad for the coil. Um, I keep this because it's useful to just temporarily fit them if you want to boost the voltage to work a, if you haven't got enough power to work a, a timing strobe light or anything so I do just sometimes connect this up temporarily but I'd never run an engine for any length of time with anything like this in it. Um, okay, hope that's useful. Thank you very much for watching.